Jakob suggested that words could not express his appreciation for my being here, and certainly my poor words cannot express my own appreciation for the honor of being here with all of you. Um, to have uh, the opportunity to speak with those who work alongside many who are undergoing difficult life transitions, often of a traumatizing kind when they find themselves thrown into the landscape of a world made strange by loss and try to find some way of mapping this foreign terrain, of finding a path through it and finding companionship on that path, finding the secure bases or oases that can refresh us uh, for that difficult journey, moving in directions that we do not know uh, what destinations will follow this is the work that we do in many terrains, whether it is in the world of work, whether it is in the world of family, in the broader world of relationships, whether what we lose takes the form, whether what we lose takes the form of something as tangible and specific as a beloved other, or perhaps as abstract as our sense of security or justice or something in between, like our role in relation to work or career, or our sense of health, vitality. Maybe what we lose is a sense of connection to a place of cultural origin under circumstances of immigration. In all of these and still more intangible losses, perhaps of our faith or faith in someone, who now has abandoned or betrayed us. In all of these ways and more, we are all enrolled as in part of the core curriculum of life in which we have to, in some sense, learn the lessons of loss. And we do this again and again and again, more or less continuously throughout our lifetimes. What I want to do is to talk with you a little bit this morning to try to work with this frame that uh, both Denise and Jakob have constructed for us, the notion of a transition cycle, the notion borrowed and elaborated and made still more useful, um, uh, the frame, of course, of attachment theory um, offered first by John Bowlby and elaborated in such helpful directions uh, by this team um, in this book in ways that I also have invited contributions to my next book in order to help bring this good work to an, an English-speaking world as well. I want to begin then in some way with this, these models and attempt to in some way offer additional frames, additional kind of windows on the world of loss. Um, I will ground those in my experiences alongside clients, and I will, of course, in this, tend to feature losses that are losses of beloved others to death. That's the context in which I work most intimately, but far from exclusively. Beginning with that core concern, this existential predicament of the rupture in a relationship, I want us then to interrogate the models, to stretch the models, to be more um, perhaps fitting of a broad range of experiences, uh, again in a way that goes beyond our individual lives into our relational lives, into our worlds of work and beyond. Grief is not something we typically choose. It's something that chooses us. It's a function of our loving, our attachment. In some sense, it is the tax we pay for, uh, for loving. And so we are confronting then a kind of irony that in this unchosen experience of loss and grief, we confront a field of opportunity that is actually rich in choice. Whether we like it or not, when we experience the loss of someone or something dear to us, central to our identity, we are thrown into that strange land. 
and we confront an accelerated series of choices. Who now will I be? Whose now will I be? To whom will I belong, if anyone? Having lost this secure base in just this relationship, where now will I find another? Right? What purpose, what meaning might my life have when the meaning attached to that previous relationship, identity, role, career falls away? Right? How do I find a way of moving forward in the wake of that? These are not merely abstract kinds of questions. They have to do with, do I live in the same city? Do I keep this home? Right. How now do I keep faith with who I have been and yet undergo the reconstruction that will allow me to be who I now can or must be? So it is the, with the recognition, I think, of the the choice implicit in this unchosen status of loss that I want us to, uh, to focus our attention. And as we then seek to co-construct a helpful direction for people whose lives have been decimated, shattered, torn, stressed by losses of many kinds, we need to listen to the words they tell us, but we also need to listen between and beneath the words they tell us and themselves about their losses, about what they need and how they need it. Every client we work with around any kind of problem or transition will always tell us precisely what she needs and how she needs it at each conversational turn of therapy. The only question is, do we have our antennae extended far enough to pick up the signals? 